Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a short, sweet kind of video, I think, hopefully. Real quick, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment below. We are doing a giveaway. We have decided when that giveaway is going to be exactly. Uh, that is going to happen once we hit a thousand subscribers. So we're a little over a hundred right now. Um, so all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and uh, check out the previous video. There'll be a link below or at the end of this video uh, to that video showing what we're giving away. But real quick, we're giving away some audio interfaces uh, and a keyboard. More will come down the road. I'm planning on doing lots of giveaways. So there's a little over 100 of you already subscribed. So if you share that with 10 people, tell them, hey, subscribe. It won't take that long. We'll get there and we'll start giving away stuff. I already bought stuff to give away. I'm not using it, so let's do that. Okay, so today's video, I'm gonna do a little tip trick for those of us that have to record by ourselves um, or sometimes record by ourselves. Uh, oftentimes, if I'm recording myself, um, you know, uh, it, it's not a big deal if you're recording in an environment where maybe it's a little quiet uh, where, I, where I'm at. Um, it gets real warm in this room, especially with all the electronics going. So I generally have an AC slash fan or one or both running pretty consistently. Uh, maybe not all the time, but uh, when it gets warm anyway. So there's that noise. And I guess you could just turn off those things, but you may also have computer noise and things of that nature. Depending on the computer you run, depending on the gear you run, your noise level may be different. Um, if you're real fancy, you may have your computer in a different room. You may have your power supplies for things in a different room and in, in uh, you know, it, it varies. But reality is most of us have, uh, you know, maybe a laptop or a computer, home computer. And there's probably some fan noise coming off of it when we're pushing the computer or at least some most of the time. Uh, some of us might be lucky, it might be silent, and that's great. This might not be a huge thing to you, but because of noise issues, um, I tend to record in a separate a booth. Uh, I turned a storage area uh, that's next to my living room uh, into essentially a vocal booth slash storage for camera gear and, as well. Um, but some of that storage will be moved to a different place down the road, but for right now, I'm storing a lot of my camera gear in the same vocal booth area. Uh, I have, you know, blankets up and some foam on the walls to deaden, deaden the sound pretty well and does a pretty good job of isolating for, from my computer fans and air conditioners and, and whatever else. It, it definitely makes a big difference. So let me show you what I do to help record myself. Okay, so as you've seen in previous videos, I have the Studio Live S32 console, which is great. This console lets me, it's also my interface uh, or my main re interface for when I'm doing recording. I also have a Scarlett 18i20 that used to be my main interface. Um, still an awesome interface, but it's more of just a sound card secondary audio interface for me at this point in time. Anyway, so one of the cool things with this console and some other interfaces probably have similar things is it allows you to connect to it via Wi-Fi. So I have this iPad here that gives me the option to control everything on the console. So if I move a fader here, you can see it move down here, you know. So it gives me control so I can take this with me and take it into the booth, which is pretty sweet. I also use Studio One. This is also a pre-sauce mixer, so it works really well. Let me see if I can pull up the Studio One session. So I also have another app on my iPad here called Studio, uh, Studio One Remote. It allows me to control the DAW. It gives me basic functionality of the mixing console, basically all the functionality of the DAW for the most part right here. It gives me all these shortcut buttons I can use for quick commands, and I can see what's going on. Uh, which, generally speaking, is probably enough. Now, that would generally be enough to do everything. I also like to see what's on my screen. So I have a secondary iPad, 
in the booth that basically stays in there uh, for the most part. And its function is to connect to my computer through a, a, a wireless app, and I'll show that you show that to you in a second. Um, and it basically gives me a screen layout. Uh, though I do have a kind of a weird screen layout, so this is not your standard 16 by 9, at least for the, my main monitor down here. It's a super ultra wide uh, 49 inch uh, screen, so it's what was it 21 by 9 or something? I don't know. I forget the actual the uh, aspect ratio on it, but it's, it's basically two 16 by 9 monitors stuck together with no bezel in the middle. So when you're viewing in my case, when I'm viewing it on an iPad, I get this really weird aspect ratio that I have to kind of zoom in and out of, um, which is fine. But if you're using it, if you're using the same solution, most often you're probably not going to have this particular screen uh, or something like this. You're probably going to be running a 16 by 9 monitor, which it will match up directly and it'll actually work a little bit better for you. All right, so we're in the in this my makeshift vocal booth. Um, as you can see, this phone behind me. I do have some storage stuff in here, some boxes and things, which I plan on actually getting rid of, or not getting rid of, but moving someplace else. Um, and then I have, let me turn the camera around here. So I have more foam here and on the sides, uh, kind of hodgepodge of, of camera, batteries, and just camera stuff in general. Uh, for the most part, uh, some tripods and some cases for other camera related stuff for screens and gimbals and etc. Um, so anyway, this is where I keep the iPad. I'll point it down here. All right, so I have this app called, let's see if we can get to focus on it. Maybe not. It's called Duet. Um, it's right here. And this is connected via Wi-Fi to my computer. I have an application, the same application, on um, my computer, and it communicates back and forth. Um, so, click on Mirror, and what this is going to do... So this isn't the perfect solution all the time, but it works pretty well for what I need. So as you can see, I'm seeing on my screen here what's out there. Now if I hit like, and I can actually touch and, and interact with the screen out there, but that's not usually the best, this isn't the best way to, like, do your recording. It, I find it kind of, Windows really isn't, and, and DAWs aren't really designed for touch for the most part, and so I don't really do too much other than zoom in and out. So you hit the button down here, oops, on this particular app, and this will lets me zoom in and out and move around the screen, and now I'm not actually, like, interacting with the screen out there I'm just viewing it and then I can click this button again and now I can actually go in and interact and touch things and arm stuff and and do basic functionality so you could use this in that way if you wanted to I find it to be a little a, a little better to use a second iPad for the actual commands and actually controlling the DAW itself this is just a good visual aid uh, and this is what I use. So let's talk about some other options. So now that I'm back out here, uh, some other options, at least what I've done in the past, is you could use uh, a secondary keyboard, like a wireless keyboard, because you can have multiple keyboards, multiple mices set up off of one computer. It's not a problem. Uh, and because they're, they don't require a lot of bandwidth, you can run them off of a hub, so you don't necessarily have to you make sure that you're connected directly to a USB port. So if you're short on USB ports, you could set up essentially uh, all your mice and keyboards through a hub and you'll be just fine. Also, uh, I found it useful to run a second screen in a booth. Um, basically just a duplicate of whatever your main screen is, um, or you could do an extended, just depends on how you want to work in your workflow because you know you may, you may want to drag it over there. It just depends. but. For me, I was usually just, you did a mirror of the second, of, of a screen. Um, if I was doing, doing it like that in the past. Um, I already have three screens set up here, so I didn't want to run another screen. That's just that much more work for your video cards to, to do. And I mean, it wouldn't be an issue per se for me, but um, it just, I found it just easier just to run the, what I'm doing now. 
uh, at, for what what I need it for. Because um, it doesn't need to be like perfectly. There doesn't need to be no latency or anything when it comes to like just viewing what's on the screen, right? You just need the audio to have good late, latency issues or no latency issues. So you could put another screen in there, run an HDMI cable to it, uh, that kind of thing. Um, there's lots of different ways you can run it. You know, you can get real slick with it and hide the HDMI cable. You can get long HDMI cables that aren't that expensive anymore. If you look around, realistically, most of the time, just running a second HDMI over there, especially if you're running a laptop, right? If you're running a laptop and you have a real simple setup, like many uh, people recording stuff at home, they have their laptop as their main thing, a dock, uh, you know, a, a basic two channel or four channel or whatever interface connected to it, some speakers, some headphones, maybe a MIDI controller. So you don't have a huge collection of, of gear yet, but you still want to isolate that sound. This is a good option. You could set up a makeshift booth like I did in the closet kind of situation. Um, you definitely, uh, you want to kind of test how much, how much foam slash blankets or whatever you're going to use to deaden the sound, you know, you don't want to play with that uh, for the best effect. You could also get like C-state. You could do another thing. You could run, if you don't have a closet, you just have a single room or, or whatever, but you need to want, you want to isolate the sound. What you can do is get some C-stands um, and then hang blanket, like heavy blankets over some attached rods and stuff in the room. That way you can set it up and tear it down as you need to record vocals or whatever you're recording that you need to kind of isolate some of the background room noise from. Um, so that's a great solution. Anyway, so to record yourself, this gives me the remote remote capability. You can also do it with another mouse and an, uh, another monitor. You can find cheap monitors online. Uh, you know, I mean, good, you can find monitors at Goodwill or secondhand on Facebook Marketplace. People are giving away monitors all the time. We're super cheap. Uh, they're a dime a dozen. So, you know, you don't need the fanciest for that. You just need something to see what you're doing, right? Or you can try it like back in the day. One one thing I also did back in the day before I had a monitor is I just remembered all the shortcut keys on, on the keyboard for what I was, the program I was using. And I was able to just to kind of navigate up and down tracks like, and across sections uh, of the song just using shortcut keys on a keyboard and arm tracks and, and that's a lot more takes a lot of memorization a lot of time and stuff to, to pick that up so sometimes it's just easy to run a monitor in there that's what I would suggest is run a monitor and um, I feel like I'm just rambling hopefully this makes some sense or you can go this similar route as me and use an iPad and uh, if you're running an Apple, that's pretty. I know it's pretty simple. You don't even have to use Duet. I think there's like a, a native solution for Apple. I don't. I don't use Mac, so I'm not super familiar. I do know that there is a native solution to screen. Essentially, set up a second screen or duplicate your screen over an iPad from your 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 Apple computer. So there's that option too if you're using a Mac. Um, so hopefully this was useful for you guys. For those recording by yourselves and you still need to be able to isolate from your computer system where you're not sitting directly in front of it uh, and so you can get a better sound quality at the same time as, as being able to do everything by yourself because we don't always have producers out here clicking the record button and moving things around for us uh, I do that a lot for other people but I, I've been doing this a long time and I prefer to record myself most of the time and uh, it's what I do so Hopefully this is helpful. If you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If not, um, I guess you can give me a thumbs down, but I'd, I'd appreciate a thumbs up or at least whatever. Just comment below what you thought of this. If there's some other content that you'd like to see, some more tips and tricks, maybe specific things that you want me to talk about, maybe demonstrate or go over, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Just uh, let me know uh, in the comments below. And again, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that. It really help the channel grow. Uh, and hopefully uh, we get over a thousand subscribers so I can give away this gear that I bought. Like, I don't want it sitting here forever collecting dust. So let's just get some subscribers and get this gear in some people's hands that could use it. Whether it's for a mobile get rig, you know, maybe whatever, or maybe it's your first audio interface. You're just getting into it. 
either way. Please subscribe, and we'll be doing the giveaway as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. I appreciate you coming back and watching. Thank you. Peace.